at the end of the day, we all want to feel like our lives are meaningful, we have relevance, and we belong. When those things aren't being met by what I'm going to call more wholesome engagements, so by pursuing craft, by being a part of a community, by being involved with your family, with your friends, with your neighborhood, whatever it is, then the easiest way to get them is to go to your email or to go to your social media where you're constantly reminded that you matter, that there are other people out there. So I know in my own life, right, it's a gift and a curse that through my writing, I've developed somewhat of a public platform. And I can tell you with direct correlation, the times that I spend more time on Twitter or Instagram are the times when I'm spending less time with my neighbors, with my wife, with my kid, in the gym, because I'm lonely, ultimately. And I think that there's a lot of um, loneliness, too, that, that kind of goes with the being up more or uprooted. You know, long before I wrote Groundedness, the philosopher Hannah Arendt wrote about what she called uprootedness, which is like this deep loneliness yeah. when you're not only lonely because you're not with other people, but you're also lonely with yourself because you're so distracted, you can't think your own thoughts. And the result of it is this superfluousness where you're kind of like never really here, never really there, always kind of everywhere. And groundedness is hopefully an antidote to firmly situate you. So yeah, we'll get into it, but that deep community is, is such a part of it. And that's the outward connection and belonging. But then so is like owning your own presence and in, in your own energy and attention so that you can belong to yourself. I think that a, a trap that a lot of people fall into is that they become lonely on both fronts. So they're so reactive in their life and they're so pushed and pulled by whatever's trending on the, 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 the Twitter or Instagram or God forbid, like CNN or Fox News or whatever. So they can't really like think their own thoughts because they're just ping ponging and they're not spending time building deep community with other people. And the result is like this feeling of being unmoored. It's no one's fault. It's like, this is in the water. This is I think this is the biggest problem of the 21st century. Uh, it's why I wrote this book in, in, in part is um, the culture just promotes this. So it's both a timeless problem, right? Like Buddhism, Stoicism, um, the mystical arms of Christianity, Judaism, Islam, like they all originated to counter this problem of suffering caused by feeling like you're not enough and always wanting more. But like, man, it's intensified. Uh, because back then, like, you know, you would strive to be the, the prince or to, to move up to the Brahmin class or what have you. And today you just develop a social media account and, you know, try to get verified and get a bunch of followers or whatever. I agree with, with all of that. The other thing that I think adds to this is, well, 50 years ago, if we put in our shift at the local factory or had done our job, we go home and we're with family. We are with friends. Any other extracurricular activity is going to be spent in a group setting or with our families. It was easy to unplug. Even if we're, we have a family, we're now working from home more than ever and COVID expedited that process and everyone's work is following them around. And without that grounding component, of course, you're never, you're in a never ending worrying loop of what else you could be doing to satisfy the question of uncertainty that just life brings with it. 